within the context of the joy of the resurrection of the Lord of this fifth Sunday of Easter. We are given today an opportunity to look back at the very events that won our salvation once again. We're given an opportunity to look back from this perspective at the very mystery and the wonder of our Lord's passion and death and maybe even his resurrection. And, you know, during Lent and Easter, I mean, during Lent and the Paschal, the Triduum, we're sort of caught up in the, in the emotions and the sadness and the darkness of that day and we're encouraged to enter into it. But now, five weeks later on, now that we know the full story, we now know the victory, we're given an opportunity to peer back and look and see the cross once again so that we can come to grips with the wonder of what the Lord is doing for us. And so, what do we see? What we see today, my brothers and sisters, is that the cross is not a place of despair. It's not a place of sadness. Rather, the cross is a place of glory. The cross is a place of glory. We heard that in the readings today of the gospel. And by glory, I mean this is a place of sensible, visible manifestation of the power of God. Sensible, visible, clear manifestation of the power of God. And therefore, the cross is not only a place of glory, it's a place of deep revelation. We really, really, really come to see who God is. And at the end of the day, John the evangelist summarizes for us, God is love. God is love. Because what we see on the cross is nothing but love, 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 love. In all its facets. And we come to see that this is really who God is, love. How does this even make any sense? Listen to what Jesus said in the gospel today. We go back to the Last Supper. Jesus, Judas left the room to go and betray Jesus. And then Jesus basically began to speak these words. He says, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. The Son of Man glorified. How is the Son of Man being glorified? The Son of Man is being glorified in that in perfect obedience to the Father's will, in perfect obedience to the Father's will, he makes a complete gift of self in the flesh and he offers himself without reservation to the Father through his passion. And therefore, the Son of Man is glorified. The Son of Man is also glorified in that in making this act of sacrifice, he's doing it completely not for himself because he doesn't need this. He's doing it completely and totally for our good. St. Thomas Aquinas tells us, Love is willing the good of another, right? At his own expense, for our good, entirely for our good, he's willing to undergo this difficult, painful thing known as the passion. And so we see the Son of Man is being glorified in that way because he's showing us love to the end. And then as he glorifies the Father, or as he glorifies, as, he, as he's becoming glorified by making this gift of self, Interestingly, at the same time, the Father is being glorified. Because guess what? You and I come to see with our eyes something that we could not see with our eyes before. We come to see who the Father is, who this God is. We always heard God is love, God is love, but we didn't understand that. We come to see it in Jesus. Wow! For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. He would not even spare the most precious thing to himself his only son, in order to rescue us, slaves, sinners, outcasts, in order to rescue us, he would not even spare his own son. And so he even glorifies the father in himself because the whole point and purpose of Christ even coming here, and he was obsessed by this, he wanted to make known the father. He would often tell his disciples, he who sees me sees the father who is invisible, who we can't see. If you have seen me, you have seen the father. Well, on the cross, we get a perfect picture of the Father and that the Father is love. He's all about love. And he loves us so much that he doesn't even spare his own son. You see that? We also see again that the Father wills our good, willing the good of another, to the point that he's willing to allow his own son to freely accept the sacrifice of offering himself on the cross. 
you see the cross is a place of glory. And then Jesus goes on. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself. And he will glorify him at once. The Father and the Son are one. They are one. The oneness of the Father and the Son. And we see in the mystery of the cross, the fact that this is truly a place where we encounter love in all its multiple facets. The love of the Father for the Son, the love of the Son for the Father, the love of the Son for us, the love of the Father for us, the love of the Father and the Son for us. It's like just love everywhere. Wow. And we are just there to simply receive, to receive that love that is being made manifest to us. That is why he continues. He tells us, I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so also should you love one another. This is, this is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Now, in the Old Testament, we know we're told to love one another. But Jesus calls this a new commandment precisely because we now have a concrete example and we now have a concrete place where we can turn to and look at so that we can learn this new kind of love that looks specific like something, like a cross. We have a place to go to where we can love this way. And Jesus says, insofar as we love one another with this same kind of love, this is the evidence that makes us, that dis defines us as his disciples. This is what reveals to the world, just like the cross reveals us, the love of the Father. When we love one another the same way that he has loved us, this is what is the evidence for the rest of the world to know that we are his disciples. Now, isn't that interesting that what reveals us as his disciples is not miracles, not that we are called to do miracles, although that's a nice thing. It's not us doing powerful signs and walking on water and turning water into ice and throwing lightning bolts. That's not what truly shows us to be his disciples. What defines us as disciples, as Christ is teaching us today, is love. Love the way he has done. And I suggest the only way that we can actually know how to love like this is simply to go to the cross. Go to the crucifix. Hang one up in your house if you don't have one. Pray with it. The cross is not only really a place where we can learn how to love, but it's a place where we can actually receive that love first. And as we receive and are nourished by that love, it energizes us and it, it elicits a response. It's almost like we can't help it. I want to respond in a way. And I want to respond the same way I'm receiving. And we learn how to give back and love one another as he has loved us. And I think that's the invitation today. So spend time with the cross. Go to the cross. Don't be afraid of the cross. Don't be afraid of the crucifix. Pray, what we do here at Mass is making present this mystery. That's why this is the source, summit, and center of everything we do. That's why we're required to come here every Sunday and receive. That's where we get our energy to go out and live out our lives. But even beyond the Mass, pray the rosary, sorrowful mysteries. Spend time meditating on the crucifix. The Lord will nourish your heart with his love. He will fill your heart with his love. And as we just heard, it's so multifaceted. It's amazing. You can never exhaust the mystery of the cross and how much God loves us. And as you receive, that'll give you, you and I the opportunity and the means by which we can actually love one another as he has loved us. And when we do that, that's the evidence that the world is looking for. Okay, there's something about that guy. There's something about this girl. There's something different. And people will come to know we are his disciples if we live like this. Now, all this is true, but I just wanted to point out something else before I end this harmony. There's one particular area in our lives, or in many of you's lives, which is a privileged place for you to exercise this love that Christ has given us on the cross. As a matter of fact, this area of our lives is so privileged and is such an awesome privileged place for this kind of cruciform love that has even been consecrated or set apart by its own sacrament. What am I talking about? Marriage, matrimony, holy matrimony. Matrimony or marriage is a natural vocation. It's innate in every human being, or at least most of us, right? We feel it in our bones. 
the desire to enter into communion or union with somebody else, right? But it's been elevated to a supernatural status. When two baptized persons are joined together in holy matrimony, they literally become icons of this cruciform love. They literally make present in the world the love of this cross, the love that Christ has for you and I, the church. They literally make it present. I often say this at wedding homilies. I say most of you have desktop computers, right? And on your desktop, you have icons. And when you click the icon, what does it do? It takes you straight to the website without you opening up the browser, dialing www.blah, blah, blah, dot. You just click, you're right there. That's what a man and a woman who are joined together in holy matrimony do. They make present in the world through the love that they have for one another. That love, the love that Christ has for his church, a love that, as Christ tells us, is free, is total, is faithful, is fruitful. The four characteristic characteristics of divine love. And that's precisely the four characteristics of marital love. And that marital love is precisely what a man and a woman vow to each other in front of the altar, in front of the cross, when they get married. That's why we like weddings in front of the altar, to show you and to help us understand that what we do in the church has to do with what happens at home. Because it comes from the altar, the place of sacrifice, the cross. That's what, it's, that's what you're making present in the world. An amazing mystery. Free, total, faithful, fruitful. And the vows that you give to one another verbally, you then consummate them with your bodies. Free, total, faithful, fruitful. Self-gift, willing the good of another. And that love is so powerful, especially in our culture today, that when people see it lived out faithfully, they say, hmm, how are you guys doing it? There's something special about this relationship. Hmm, wow, you must be disciples of the good Lord. I often like to say this even at like... Um, at funeral homilies, when I see couples that have been married for like 40, 50, 60 years, I'm like, that right there, I'm done. I don't have to say more. The fact that you guys have been married for 60, 70 years, to me, is almost evidence that there's some other principle at work here, because it's such a witness to this love that Christ is telling us in the gospel today. And I think the only way that one can sustain and live this mystery out in the difficulties that we have in our world today is to return to the source. Go to the cross, stay close to the sacraments, pray, come to Mass. And I say this knowing full well, there are some people among us who through no fault of their own, maybe a spouse walks out on them, and then they're kind of left in this situation. But I would suggest in those people too, insofar as they don't contract other communal, you know, marriages, and the marriage is still valid, and they're living out their faith kind of by themselves, I think you can still will the good of your spouse even though you're separated from them. You can still pray for them. You can still be faithful to your, to your call, your marital call. It's just that the goalpost has changed. You're now loving them to heaven, but in a different way. And so I think what the Lord is telling us today applies even in those difficult circumstances. In fact, I've met some of you who live this out with such heroism that I'm just like, it's, an, it's, it's awe-inspiring. And you can say, wow, there's something else going on. This is a manifestation of the love of Christ. And so that's what we're being encouraged to today. Let us love as he loved. And the only way we can do that is to go to the source, to the cross. Let us not be afraid to go to the cross, to receive this love. And as we marvel and, and simmer in this love, we have the energy and the strength to give it to one another in whatever vocation we've been called to. Praise be Jesus Christ.